Welcome back to Global Business America. I'm Michelle McCory. They are no longer just a girl's best friend. Diamonds are a multi-billion dollar global industry, perhaps because they're a girl's best friend. Worldwide diamond jewelry sales reached $81 billion last year. That's a 3% increase from the year before. Nearly two-thirds of the world's diamonds come from Africa, particularly Botswana. The African country is the biggest global producer of diamonds, producing more than $3 billion worth a year. Other sources are Canada, Russia, Australia, and South America. Now, the precious minerals can have a big impact on the economies of the countries that they're mined in, especially in Africa. While some countries have been implicated in the use of so-called blood diamonds or conflict diamonds to fund conflict, many benefit greatly from the presence of diamonds. The industry employs tens of thousands, and revenues from the industry are also used for education and healthcare services. And shopping for just the right diamond ring, bracelet, or necklace, well, can be exhilarating, but of course also very expensive. Now, many consumers can save thousands of dollars if they're open to wearing something man-made, synthetic diamonds created in labs rather than underground. But can anyone even really tell the difference? CCTV's Tracy Tandon reports. The old adage may be diamonds are a girl's best friend, but a lab-grown diamond may be a savvy consumer's best friend. It's hard to deny the brilliance and beauty of the stones. But instead of spending millions of years under the Earth's surface, these were created in a matter of weeks in a lab, developed in pressurized containers above ground, replicating what happens under the ground. A lab-grown diamond is chemically, optically, physically identical, and uh, they're both certified as a diamond. And the only distinction is that a laboratory-grown diamond comes from above the earth, and a natural or a uh, or mine diamond comes from below the earth. The synthetic diamonds are available in a variety of colors, cuts, clarity, and carats, and at a fraction of the cost of a mine diamond. We create the colorless diamonds, which everybody's the most familiar with. We create pink diamonds, which are amongst the rarest diamonds in the world. And then we create canary yellow diamonds. The colorless typically sell for about 30 to 40 percent less than a typical uh, mine diamond. The advantages are the cutting and quality of our diamonds are really top notch. The finish, the polish are all uh, excellent. And now you're really uh, buying that Mercedes type quality in our diamonds. The lab created diamonds are also certified. GIA grade and identify synthetic diamonds. We have a service for that, but we use slightly different terms in grading synthetic diamond. Diamond experts say it's impossible to tell the difference between a lab diamond and a mined diamond using just the naked eye. Diamond has tiny, tiny amount of defects, crystal defects, in the parts per million to parts per billion level. And uh, if we go to that level, nature diamond and a synthetic diamond that may show a slight difference. Culture diamonds have been around since the late 1950s but have only started to become popular in recent years as consumers choose gems that are environmentally friendly, easy on the wallet, and don't come from war zones. Still, there are hurdles to overcome. When Mickey Moto created cultured pearls back in the 1800s, and when somebody would think, well, a cultured pearl is not a real pearl, until today, Mickey Moto becomes the de facto standard for quality pearls. We were when we started with diamonds, and it's really been a question of educating the consumer that these are, in fact, diamonds in every way, shape, and form. Whether they come from the earth or from a lab, there's no denying that diamonds are indeed forever. Tracy Tandon, CCTV, New York.